everybody. I'm Lisa Walton and welcome to Quilt Stories. Today we're talking to Shin Hee Chin, who lives in Kansas but was originally from Korea and her work is just amazing. All the threads behind her are what she uses to create her magnificent works and you're just going to be amazed at the detail and the process that she uses. So welcome Shin Hee. Thank you, Lisa, for nice introduction. I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> I'm very glad to have you here. I'm actually quite excited to see these process slides because mm -hmm. I couldn't believe it. When I first saw one of your quilts and got up close, I, was just, <laughs> I thought, how does she do this? And is it machine made? And it's not machine made, is it? You do everything by hand. And That's right, yes. <laughs> and so these are the themes and materials that you work with. Mm -hmm. Would you like to mm -hmm. just tell us a little bit about each of these topics? I'm a, an artist and a professor at Tabor College in Kansas. And I immigrated from South Korea to uh, America 30 some years ago. And so my art reflect my life and the issues as a mother and as, a, as an immigrant. I become aware of the quilt when we moved to Kansas, that is the 2003. And mostly I use recycled material. Um, there are so many reasons to, to use a recycled material. Uh, something that not only uh, saving money, but also respect uh, the abandoned um, materials that once it was loved, but not anymore used. But I kind of revitalize and make my own quote. It's kind of exciting process. There are several methods that I'm doing. Today, we are going to talk about uh, random weave and stitch that I made up the word because there is no, <laughs> uh, no word for it. Also, I do make a lot of yo-yos, um, those kind of yo-yos that when my kids were little, it's good to make something <laughs> while I was waiting at the playground or uh, other places. And so I made a lot of yo-yos um, and several years I make a lot of yo-yo portrait quote. And then coiling uh, technique that I um, uh, appropriate uh, Korean paper technique that uh, twist pa paper technique that I use the, the fabric to make that kind of cord and then uh, do a lot of uh, blanket stitches and create the foam. And do I do have a mixed media. And so mixed media is the one that I use uh, pencil, uh, oil and watercolor, oil pastel. Then uh, recently I used uh, mixed media as my inspiration and then I converted to quilt. And so that is kind of my transition these days. I think we'll have to get you to come back and do another interview because I love your yo-yo quilts and I'm fascinated <laughs> by the coiling as well. So um, yes, you're very talented. <laughs> All of Shinhee's links in the description below. We also have a stop motion video in the links of one of her mm -hmm. recent quilts, which you'll see a bit later. So this is uh, a version of your random weave and stitch. That, that's right. So it's kind of, it evolves that uh, when I was a, a graduate student, um, I saved all my kids clothes for a rag for the painting, oil painting. But then for the show, I have to make a body of work. And I realized that using um, painting takes a lot of money and so um, the the clothes that that I saved I just kind of packed and then tied together and then wind it and then create the human form three-dimensional form that uh, I kind of uh, evolved with the the stitches then I have a uh, other woman form of a uh, uh, kind of stages woman or uh, state of mind so those are kind of a technique that I create a three-dimensional form for a while. That is uh, the series of uh, kind of a, the, the woman's form that I call it as a prayer, patience, silence, and dream. It's uh, also kind of a stages of art making that takes a lot of time and, uh, <laughs> yes. and planning. Yes, and so individual, it is independent work, but also it kind of shows the my process of art making. Then we moved to Kansas 2003. And at the time, 
I uh, used that technique to two-dimensional uh, fabric, which was a moving blanket that I talked to my husband, we are not moving anymore. <laughs> I'm sick, <laughs> tired of moving. So I converted all the moving blanket into oh. a quilt. <laughs> um, so the size is 50 by 70. So I just uh, cut it uh, because the, the moving blanket is a, is a big size. And yeah. so cut it and then make it another kind of a stages woman by the age. So this is kind of a converted from 3D to 2D. And actually it is, it is another kind of a adventure or a little bit kind of a scary thing that I kind of have a little bit fear that what if it doesn't work? <laughs> um, because the, the three dimensional one that I crunch it with my hand and then create the form. But when I was working 2D work, if it is crunches, then it deformed the face. Mm -hmm. So that mm -hmm. was a little bit hard. So I, I have to control the, the tension of the thread not to kind of uh, wrinkle too much about it and, and then look at the feature of the faces and uh, the shades. And so it was a kind of a lot of learning curve. Uh, so that was a 2003. And so 2012, I sent uh, the left one, John of Arc, to European patchwork. At the same time, I made another work, uh, Yu Gan Sun, there is a Korean patriot activist. Uh, so I used all the kind of a earthy tone of her and then use a side view of them that one country's patriot can be perceived enemy to the other countries. So when we say one country's patriot, that means we only so, see uh, the, the one side of them. I do love my country, Korea and America, but at the same time, when you love your country, that doesn't mean that you hate other countries. And we're starting to see the detail of your stitch mm -hmm. work here. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure everybody's sort of coming up really close to the screen to, <laughs> to have a look at it. I create this piece um, honoring my father. My father taught 18th century English literature. So I grew up with all the beautiful English poem. When I came to United States, I realized that the poem that I know, the English that I knew, was not the English that people are talking. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it was a shocking. And so, <laughs> so I, I couldn't speak because people speak so fast and the colloquial word that I didn't experience. So I have a lot of kind of a, a stages of learning curve too. But um, the, the literature, the, the, the poems is uh, my inspiration of my work. And um, I call it the evening hour of a hermit. My, my father deceased two years ago, but um, five years ago, uh, before he fell down and he was paralyzed, uh, we uh, went to the beach and then uh, uh, enjoyed the sunset. And on that day, he uh, shared his uh, poem that he's translated into Korean is that, uh, it's William Wordsworth poem that is a beauteous evening, calm and free. And so he was so excited to share the poem that translated into Korean. And then after that, it's, uh, it's kind of a, it's a darkened a little bit. And I captured the moment. It was a little bit pensive moment. And then there are several other photos. And the one on the right is my uh, uh, watercolors. And then the bottom one is uh, several photos of the, the scene. And as you see that it's a recycled um, blanket. Uh, it's unraveled the thread. And so the part that my dad's kind of a neck, uh, the, the color mm -hmm. still show the, the fabric, the striped fabric. Uh, the, so the black, a, the black yeah. thread on the right, is that uh, woven already? Uh -huh. or is that just um, waiting to be stitched? It is waiting to be stitched. The top one, the, the orange one, is kind of a, a stitched, a tacked together, yep. but the, the, the black one is not yet stitched. Okay. So it is kind of going to be, yes. Uh, so is that just uh -huh. the thread just unraveled and just sitting there? Right, yes. Okay. Yes. And when I unravel the thread, I use a lot of recycled kind of a thread. And so it is not a certain a specific thread. I just look at the color. And then um, sometimes I use a yarn, sometimes I use a crochet kind of a, a thread, all kind of thread that 
uh, because it, it, it makes a base. And so I don't necessarily use a nice thread for that. The one that rolled on the left side, that is the other side of the fabric. So if I need to add some areas, then I kind of attach the, the fabric. It's obviously a lot of handwork. Uh, are your hands strong uh -huh. or are they getting a bit tired now? Actually, hand is all right, uh, <laughs> but um, sitting uh, long hours of stitching does not necessarily make you <laughs> The tiresome, so it's a kind of a reward. I, I realized that I need to take care of my body. So I had a back pain, a lot of back pain uh, when I was stitching. So start to walk. <laughs> stitching part is, is fun, it's meditative. You see the progress, but do some, some exercise and yeah. some other stuff. And then, you know, house chores and then other things also it takes a lot of time but it makes me uh, grounded and then go back to work. And so uh, it kind of balances out. <laughs> yeah. Yes, this is the finished one. A, lov a lovely memory of your father as well. So this is another of your quilt, which um, mm -hmm. you're, you're sort of getting into trees a little bit here, aren't you? That's right, yes. And so the previous, um, the inspiration the, for my, the evening hour of our hermit, there the several trees that is, look like a, almost a silhouette and then i continue to work on the image and then this time it's a japanese word komorebi means it's a kind of a light shining through the tree leaves this one also uh, worked on the blanket 30 some years mm -hmm. um it kind of journeyed with my life. And so um, before my marriage, I had this blanket. And then after marriage, it came from South Korea to uh, United States and then had the two kids and moved uh, from West Coast to East Coast and then finally settled in Kansas. And so the blanket is too worn out. And so I covered the, the thread. At first, you can slightly see it's some kind of a green leaves underneath. Yes. Um, so that is the, the blanket that is well loved by okay. our family. Yes. And then uh, I uh, stitch more onto the, the second one and then the third one. So the, the colors is a little bit muted. And so it's like a North Coast color field painting that the, the, the boundaries is a little bit blurred. That is my base work. Um, so it's a it's a kind of a kind of a boring, but actually I'm a boring person. I enjoy the process. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and then the fun part is that I start to to add the trees, and so so stitching is extension of my drawing. I teach drawing and painting. It's more like a drawing with a thread, but I do enjoy the the medium, the the thread, the the tension. And then the fluidity that kind of a, it, you, you play with a thread and trees are very interesting <laughs> object to, to uh, depict. And so the structure of trees is from Asian painting of uh, uh, line drawing with India ink. So I trained in the uh, uh, Asian painting also. Mm -hmm. so kind of uh, uh, use that technique to the stitches. And so it becomes uh, uh, more engaging with, uh, with the stitches and uh, different kind of a threads. So much depth in your work as well, because you're starting <laughs> from the layers and you're building up and it's, it's um, yes, yeah. quite magnificent. This is, this is you continuing to work. Um, I'm just That's interested right. in the threads that you use. Yes, um, yes. It to be um, like a pearl cotton or something that sort of thickness? Yes, yes. My favorite thread is a pearl cotton. It's, uh, it's a little bit shiny and it's a pricey so that I mix with other thread. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes, uh, sometimes I fight against the thread. <laughs> I don't win. <laughs> thread wins all the time but I become to learn to yield that kind of follow the nature of the thread 
and then find the beauty in the process. So even though I did a lot of these teacheries, I learned new things all the time. The thread became my teacher. <laughs> so I just want to go back slightly. That mm -hmm. first layer of thread um, mm -hmm. that's not stitched is it that's just the threads all just sort of massed and laid down and then the stitching happens with the next layer is that correct base was already stitched once it is a stitch it um, then there's a kind of tangled each other yes. so it creates the form so if you uh, like this kind of a tree shape that I'm stitching with a dark thread yep. if the base is not constru constructed then uh, you don't, you cannot uh, create the form that much. So the base work, the, the one that you saw before, unleveled, and then it's all stitched. That's just stitched loosely mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to sort of form a sort of... That's right, surface. yeah. Here we have you doing the hand stitching. Um, uh -huh. The reason I asked about your, your hands before was I have uh -huh. arthritic hands. And just watching you do this is making my hands hurt. But are you going through the back of the blanket as well? Yes, yes, yes. Um, it uh, it kind of uh, packed in, so it uh, it is to create the form. So here, here we have more tree inspiration. This is the uh, um, the 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 one that I got the award uh, from uh, Schoenfeld uh, Art Center, and I am so honored and thankful because um, this technique. I mean, these days people do some thread work. Um, recently, I um, make a several pulled with the trees, um, but this inspiration actually came from the, the, the poem that my dad translated, William Butler Yeats. Actually, the drawing that I did is when I was graduate, uh, graduate school in Korea to, uh, 1985. Um, <laughs> I uh, I worked with my dad, uh, uh, make a covers and inside um, drawings or or print making. I just inserted, and so it's a kind of a collaboration. But it's it's a great honor to do that because I did uh, respect my dad, but. I betrayed him that he wanted me to go to his field, but I, I said I would let her do art. And so that makes him a little bit disappointed uh, through this work. He loved me no matter what, but I felt a little bit sorry to him that choosing my own path, kind of uh, abandoning my father's wish was a little bit hard for me. But through this work, we kind of... Uh, we are happy. <laughs> um, so that was the moment that uh, my dad also uh, retiring from the school and he uh, recite this poem to his retirement uh, speech um, that he would rather be uh, fallen leaves uh, become uh, kind of a resources for the the young <laughs> trees. And so that was very, he shows his humility. And so that was very nice. And then um, I uh, look at the trees a lot. And so from the, the previous one, the trees is more like a silhouette. So it's a little bit darkened kind of a stitches. But then uh, I thought of my dad and uh, about kind of a, because he, 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 call, he called himself as a hermit and he, uh, he does his work without noticing. And so that's very, I, I noticed him doing that. And so I thought about what if I do the night trees and start another uh, uh, wool blanket. Um, that the left side is a studying. So it was a, kind of a brownish color uh, blanket. And so when I was studying, I, I changed the, the direction of it. The, the first one shows the, the stripe, but then second one shows that the bottom one is a kind of sharp contrast, but then the, the toward the top, it has a gradation. Uh, this time I started with teach it's a lighter one, so beige and white uh, uh, thread on top of that. 
that is again uh, layers and layers of steel. The night tree is the one, and then also it's our autumn, so it could be sad, <laughs> but it's, it's just part of a life that certain part yield and then certain part grows, and so it's kind of a recycling. And so, so I kind of show wanted to show that the humility of nature, <laughs> and also it grows even though we don't see it at night it grow. And so I wanted to show that. And when I was keep on stitching it, she self very abstract lines. As a whole, we just look at it as a tree. So the the idea of a tree is a representational. I copy the nature. But the way you are depicting the, the, the trees is abstract form that kind of a uh, non-figurative lines, kind of a, a connecting the lines and overlapping the lines. And so actually I like the interplay between the two. Um, you mentioned before you didn't know whether it was a quilt or not or whether um, what you were doing was a quilt. Uh, but I know that you're a, a proud member of SACWA, Studio Art Quilt. I, I am, yeah. And their definition of an art quilt is something that is layered and stitched or referencing mm -hmm. layered and stitched. And absolutely, you fit mm -hmm. that category completely. So, um, <laughs> not a problem at all. People appreciate different kind of a quilt. Here you are. This is your studio yes. at home, is it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a basement. And so recently it was flooded. So I, <laughs> I got it out. And then, um, and so it's, a, it's also part of life. And, uh, but th that is the one that I was working on the edges of the quilt because, and so that is the one that uh, also stitches. So, how, how many hours would you do at one sitting? It depends on, so sometimes if I'm crazy and I'm on the deadline, I measure my time. I can sit down 10 hours, but that is very rare. I do um, one or two hours a day uh, after teaching and I'm tired and I am tired with my voice. And so it's kind of quiet and then stitching gives me a little bit grounded and, yeah. uh, and then quiet. And so... So it's more like a therapy for me. Here, here is your quilt at the Swine, I can't yes. say it, Swine First Gallery, where you have just been awarded the best of show. And yes. I think Thank that's you. absolutely wonderful and well-deserved. So congratulations. Um, Thank you very much. A magnificent piece. Thank you. Here is a front on view. And mm -hmm. the depth is just incredible. And I'm sure people are sort of quite gobsmacked at the Thank uh, you. the technical aspects of it. It's just gorgeous. So the last quilt Thank that you. we're just going to have a look at is your goldfish quilt. And in the description box is mm -hmm. um, a time-lapse video of the creation of this quilt. And it's just incredible. This has just been a snapshot into one of the techniques that that you are known mm. for. It's just, you have also had the honor of being accepted <laughs> into uh, Quilt National, which is uh -huh. um, a great honor. And so this is the quilt that's been accepted. Uh -huh. And you're just going to give me a little bit of um, description on, on how you made it. Yes, um, again, this is uh, inspired by the poem, The End and the Beginning, Polish poet. And, um, <laughs> The, the quilt was based on my uh, abstract uh, mixed media. So I don't have it with me, but something like this kind of image. And so there's the, the small kind of pieces of mixed media with the India ink that can be used in my um, mix, the, the quilt, abstract quilt. And um, this kind of a small size, size is small, but it contains a lot. And it also it's a recycled postcard. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but uh, the size is small, so I can easily uh, work on it and then add a layer and layer. Uh, when you are working on a big piece, sometimes it's overwhelming. And this method is that kind of a, it's a more like hands-on activities that your hands and your mind is kind of creating. And it doesn't necessarily made it into the quilt, but kind of doing some small act of creating leads to a big pieces. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the kind of, I work with the India ink on the paper and then I use the thread. From 
inspiration to my artwork uh, is different a little bit, even though I inspire from mixed media collage. But when I was working with the fabric and the thread, it creates another dimension. And so it's another adventure and journey that I listen to the fabric and the thread. And so it's kind of an ongoing a dialogue while I was creating. So some, sometimes I do have a plan and I stick with the plan. But the other time is that it's open-ended and the idea is there. And to get to the idea, because I started with the poem, and there's a lot of detour uh, and a lot of uh, improvisation. But then later, once I decide, I kind of uh, stick with it. So it's a kind of a journey quilt that I uh, submit for the Quilt National. Uh, has a lot of different fabrics, organza and cotton and all the leftover uh, fabric that I um, used. And um, there's equal parts of a fabric and the thread. I'm so thankful that um, this, this attempt, sometimes, you know, when you are achieving something, then uh, studying new is a little scary. Then <laughs> that's my kind of a struggle. Yet sometimes I'm very honest that I do my trial and errors, and sometimes I I have to embrace my um, childish attempt. <laughs> uh, it is very rewarding that do continue your work, but you kind of uh, embedded a little bit of adventure in between. Definitely. So quilt making is that kind of continual dialogue from uh, my uh, kind of a technique, but also inviting new new technique or through the trial and errors. That's excellent. Uh, thank you for that little snapshot of your Quilt National piece. I suspect Quilt National, as usual, is going to be an absolutely magnificent show. But it's it's been lovely because we've seen your technique. We've seen how your brain works a little bit, which is always <laughs> good. And it's it's been really interesting. I really appreciate that, you know, I, I, my life is like a hermit. I love teaching in a small college, but um, when I send my artwork, that is the only exposure. And I don't, miss, I don't usually go and uh, meet the people and I'm going to later on. It's, it's good that my, my art or my quilt as a, my kids showing up to the world first and then I, I can show behind of them. Kind of a... <laughs> I'm, I'm sure yeah. everyone's really enjoyed seeing your work and, and your thought processes and if you have enjoyed this video please subscribe there's a button we've got so many wonderful comments about the artists that I'm chatting to and it's just been really lovely so I want to thank you very much for your time today and I look forward to seeing what you come up with next and thank you very much bye for now bye <laughs>